Cozart here, president of Big Daddy Motor Cars. I'm here with Damon Freeman. He's our fabricator builder. Hello, here at the shop, part of the team, Big Daddy Motor Cars. We're here today working on our 67 Ford Mustang GT500 customer build. And today we're going to talk about installing subframe connectors. So tell us about that, Damon. What are we going to do today? Okay, so those of you who are knowledgeable about older Mustangs, uh, this probably won't pertain to you very much, but those of you who are newer in the subframe vehicles, this is what a subframe vehicle looks like. What that means is it is a subframe, it is part of a frame. The frame, as you can see, does not continue all the way through as one member, like a Chevelle, a GTO, a lot of them have full frames, okay? The Mustangs have subframes. So it's great to have stock motor and stuff like that in a Mustang, but if you start doing upgrades, you know, you want your car to be a little faster, handle a little better, stuff like that, you have to do something to strengthen the car so that it can handle the horsepower and the, you know, more serious, uh, hardcore turns and track stuff. You know, you start uh, driving your car on the road a little faster, a little stiffer, you know, uh, lower profile tires, uh, stiffer suspension, stuff like that. You've got to have a stronger car. Okay, so the reason why we do this is stock vehicles just can't handle higher horsepower or, or more intense suspension handling packages because these do not have full frames through their subframes. So when we connect them, we're connecting the subframes because it's going to take the twist and the bow out of it. So you won't see your door lines close up because the body is flexing because it can't handle the horsepower or the suspension packages. Okay, so here we are. We're going to get busy with it. We got David here. We got a pair of subframe connectors that we got from Mike Myers Racing performance products and uh, so Damon's going to tell us about this here. So the first thing we're going to do is put them on and check fit them and make sure they fit the subframe correctly and then mark it out, grind the paint off where we need to weld and then weld them in place, clamp them and weld them in place so that they fit the subframe correctly. So Damon these things are built to fit by Mike. Mike builds these to actually fit these Mustangs perfectly. Right. Yes, they do. And one of the features that we like about Mike Myers is he has multiple points of connections on each subframe. There are some out that only have one point of connection and one point of connection on the rear. And we don't, we do, we don't want to use that because the multiple points makes it so that it reduces the twist and flex dramatically. If there's only one point, it kind of acts as a pivot where it can pivot on that one point of connection. With multiple points, it has to spread its torque and twist out across the multiple points. So we're going to put these on. Okay, so this for you. So we see how this, we see how this subframe connector it fits right over the existing. And I think it's important to mention. It's important to mention with Mike's product, it also takes up this bend on the rear portion here, where the tube, the tube here is actually bent. You see the tube's bent? It's bent to match this part of the frame, so that you get this strengthening all the way through, as opposed to just picking it up right around here. There are other companies out there that do subframe connectors and one of them, there's a few of them that just happen to slot the floor from the end of the front subframe to the back of the torque box. So they're actually cutting this, the floor. Yes they are. They cut a slot out and do like a tube through the floor and you can see where the floor drops off and goes kind of under the seats. Well that is where the torque box start, stops inside the car. And the subframe is right there on the torque box. So they slot the floor from this subframe through to that subframe on the torque box inside the car. So they weld the plate on and weld a tube in between the two and then weld the sub, the floor pan to the tube. 
which is great. It gives it a lot of strength. The only thing that we're not too fond of is the single plate tying the tube into. So it's like taking two tubes and relying on a welded plate in between them to do this. The reason we're relying on Mike Meyer, Mike Meyer's racing suffering connectors is we don't have to cut the car up for one. And two, it gives us, like I said earlier, the multiple points of connection which spreads the torque out farther down the subframes. And we don't have to rely on an end plate weld where it at, this plate here actually saddles the end and runs down the subframe and it has another plate out in front of it. Same with this rear. The rear of the tube is bent in conjunction with the subframe. It seats right along it and it's a plate welded on each side so that we can weld the subframe connector to the sides of the subframe and then another point up front directly to the torque box, which torque box, which is the strengthening part of this particular vehicle with the subframes. So it gives us that two feet of extra added strength in this subframe connector on both ends rather than a tube notched through this, the floor pan to the torque box and the end of the subframe. We prefer to have it carried down through the subframing. We feel it gives it more strength in the sense of torque and bow. Perfect. Okay. Well, let's get this thing ready to go, damn it. So the subframe connectors have holes that are, we are going to weld fill to the subframes. So what we're going to do is mark all the holes so that we know where to grind the paint off so that we can get our weld from the steel of the subframe connector to the steel of the subframe. We don't want to do it over paint and stuff so that we get bubbles in our, our welds, they start spitting everywhere, and they're just not strong. So we want clean welds. So what are we doing here, David? What do we got going here? We have the subframe connector in place. It's not locked down in the front, but I have it located and I have it clamped in the rear so that I can get our plug welds tight. I've got all, all of the surfaces ground down so that we're clean, we're metal with metal. Uh, we don't have any burning paint, inner weld, stuff like that. So we're going to connect the rear of this side and then clamp down the front and connect that one. Just tap them in place, make sure everything's good, and then full weld them. Then we'll jump down and do the bottom. Okay? Good. Okay, so we got all cleaned up. We got one of our subframe connectors put in place. We got it all welded up. It looks really nice. We're going to get the second one put in place. We're going to show you a little bit about what we did there. And Damon's going to tell you a little bit about what he did with this subframe connector right here. Damon, tell us about it. Okay, so as Victor said, we cleaned up the spots that we're going to weld, ground off the primer so that we have a good metal to metal connection. We clean the paint off of the spots that we're going to weld through. Uh, as you can see, we have one installed. It was clamped so that we're flat down to the subframe, so there is a, it's not gapped everywhere. Uh, we, I ball the welds up so that I know that I have good penetration, not just to the subframe, but on the plates that connect to the subframe. So I just moved them out a little bit so they don't look like just welds. Uh, but I definitely, the most important part is penetration. Making sure that I get through to the subframe, the torque box, and the mounting plates. Uh, it's welded here in the back also at the end where it rolls around and follows the contour of the subframe. Okay, so that looks great. We got one put in. Now, Damon, what, what are we going to do on this next one here? So let me grab the other subframe connector. Okay, while Damon's grabbing that, I'll tell you, this is Big Daddy Motor Cars, and you're watching our video presentation on installing subframe connectors by Mike Myers Racing on a 1967 Ford Mustang GT500. Okay, so I have a second subframe connector here, as you can see, and I do have, I'll take off the ground clamp for the welder. I do have all the positions that we intend on welding ground down, including on the subframe connector. 
you can see all of the surfaces that are going to be welded on are clean so that I make sure that I get metal to metal on our connections. So we slide it in the middle. Make sure that we're seated, we're at contact, and we're at seats to front subframe box. Okay, so we don't need to worry about it being all snug and tight. The most important part right now is making sure this back saddle seats the back of the front subframe. And that lets us know that we can tap this in the back where it contours with the subframe. We can get that up nice and snug, clamp it, and then start tacking it in place, which is what I'll do now. Okay, so now that we're tacked in, I can go ahead and finish weld this end. We'll roll the body up, finish weld the tops, and then since we're right here, I'll finish weld these two and this side, roll it up, and then we'll weld the bottoms, and then we'll roll it to the other side and weld these bottom ones. Okay, so Damon got our subframe connectors installed on the 67 Ford Mustang GT500. Uh, Damon, you got these uh, subframe connectors in, so where are we at with it right now? So when we started out, we had ground all of the primers smooth, and the surfaces where we were going to weld the subframe connector to the subframes. We had the upper one all clamped and finished welded when we started to show you this lower one. We had it tacked in place. Then we ended up finish welding it and we smoothed out the weld. So if you were here feeling it, you could feel the bump where the weld is, but it smoothed out just so it doesn't look like a rough weld. Uh, they are all clamped down when they were finished welded. So these are both complete, tight, straight, and there are your pair of subframe connectors. And like we said, we choose Michael Myers because of the, as you can see, the multiple point of subframe connection on each subframe, the one here and here. So that way we know that we're getting multiple points on each subframe instead of just a plate on the end of the subframe, which we don't feel is as reliable. So thanks again to Mike Myers for his brilliant design for these subframe connectors. We really think they're going to do a great job for us. Uh, stay tuned, BDMC underscore Mustangs on our YouTube channel for the continuation of our customer build project of the 1967 Ford GT500. And start looking forward to the 1969 Mach 1 Boss 429 coming up. Coming soon. Booyah!